Today we're going to be putting a 1990-91 Tandy 1100FD on the internet. Okay, this is kind of like a faux getting on the internet type thing. It's not the real deal. Uh, we're actually just going through a serial port. But the whole idea is we're going to take this Tandy 1100FD, we're going to serial console into a Ubuntu desktop computer and uh, make it basically look like we're on the internet. Now you might be asking at this point, why would anyone want to put a Tandy 1100FD on the internet. I'm hoping you'll be able to answer that because I don't even know why, but it's fun, so why not? Come on. Okay, so here's our little beast. Um, this is our little Tandy 1100FD, I'm so proud of it. Uh, very good condition. Uh, I got this about a year ago or so. That was about the time when I replaced the floppy drive because when I came in it wasn't working. Uh, but uh, this is the actual um, laptop we'll be using. And uh, here's our little null modem serial cable. Okay, so here we go. We take our trusty little end of our uh, null modem serial cable. And we're going to take it and we're going to plug it in back here. And I'm going to try to do this holding the camera at the same time, which may or may not work very well. Oh. Okay, pretty good little connection. We're going to do the same exact thing at the other end on the server computer. Can't film that because where it's sitting, the light hits it weird. And you can't really see it, so... Just trust me, just plug into the serial port on your uh, Ubuntu system. All right, with the uh, floppy disk and the floppy drive, uh, we're gonna come around and we're going to run our little program here, Bananacom, starts with Bcom, and just type Bcom, enter, and note around here, a little light uh, is on while it reads the disk drive and you hear a little scratchy noise it makes whenever it's accessing the disk. And after a while it'll come up on the screen. Okay, and once it's up, we're gonna wanna press Alt-M to get to the menu. And um, you're gonna wanna go to More. All right, I've selected COM1 because that's what port my serial port's on. And what you do is, this actually starts out at, a, I wanna say 1200. Um, I've already done this, but what you do is you just keep pressing Enter here until it goes to 19.2 um, because that's the fastest that the fastest that the uh, serial port on this um, model laptop goes so you're going to go with 19.2 uh, bits per second and then uh, it automatically saves to the floppy every time you press enter so all you gotta do now is just press escape and essentially if your cable's plugged in and you got that set at 19.2 um, for COM port 1 if you're actually on COM port 1 um, then you're done with the laptop at this point. You're ready to go. Uh, if you've connected at the other end of your Ubuntu computer, then we're gonna go put a couple lines of code in our Ubuntu system and restart, and we'll be online. All right, now on our Ubuntu computer, we're gonna basically go to Google. We're gonna type Ubuntu Serial How To. This is gonna give us a real quick, uh, easy way to cut and paste the proper code to uh, make the serial port work on here. This is assuming you have an onboard serial port. If you don't, you're in a lot of trouble because I tried getting the USB to work with this and it, after two days I basically gave up. I think it was my USB adapter though, so you may have better luck. Um, basically, you're going to copy this code here. Copy that. And then you're going to go up to the Applications menu, Accessories. Um, you're going to run the terminal. And... Um, you're going to want to run sudo, actually they have the line to copy here, let's just copy this first, this is the file we're going to edit, so we're going to sudo gedit and then we're going to paste that code in there, uh, our file name, hit enter, and I'm going to type my password. screen that we need. Now, you're going to get a blank screen. I've already actually pasted that code um, from the web page in here, uh, with the exception that if you look on the web page, they have it set to 115.2 as far as the port speed. That's not going to work with our laptop, so you're going to want to change that to 19.2 in this file. Uh, go up here and hit save and quit. And go ahead and quit your browser. 
quit, please just quit. Um, you can try to manually start it, but I uh, feel safer just going up and restarting your whole computer. So we hit restart. Tell it yes, let's restart. And wait for the system to come back up again. Now we'll watch on our other screen over here. Okay, now on our Tandy, uh, with the serial ports linked up with the null modem cable and the code added for our startup on the Ubuntu machine, we basically sit and wait for Ubuntu to start. Um, and as Ubuntu initializes, we should get the terminal session started and we'll see a login prompt on the screen here. And there it is. So I log in with Chris and yeah, right. I'm not telling you my password. Enter. And uh, I typed it wrong. So, see, I can't tell you my password because I don't even know it, apparently. But you can tell how many letters it is. And there we go. So, uh, we are now logged in. We can ping the network. Uh, devices on our network and here so nifty tricky little thing if you're to show someone uh, who doesn't know anything about computers you could say hey look I'm on the internet and they might be impressed but probably not they just think you're a dork which is what I usually get um, from my wife and family and everyone else that knows me but anyway um, we're going to hit, actually we're going to go here, I, I just ran links just to show you what this is like. Uh, and on links I'm going to go to www.google.com and we get Google, Google on our little Tandy 1100FD, who would ever think that there'd be a day where our Tandy 1100FD would be searching the internet. So we type in Chris Woodring and hit Google search and we will get the search results whenever the machine gets around to it. Uh, actually, no, it's asking us do we want to accept cookies? Always does that unless you change preferences for that. And here we are on the results screen for Chris Woodring on Google search. There you go. Pretty slick, huh? That's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and quit this. Q, yes. And I'm back at my login, or uh, prompt. Clear, and just for good old fun, let's type in the old DOS command for directory listing, which Ubuntu supports. And pretend like we have a half network DOS Linux weird type thing going on here. Fun little project. Um, definitely would encourage you to try it. It's neat to look at things through the window of 20 years ago, thinking of what it was like to access network based information even at the time, what, what little bit there was. Um, it was really nostalgic to be using an old machine like this. So, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. So, that's how you take a Tandy 1100 FD and make it at least look like it's on the internet. I um, hope you enjoyed the little project here. I plan on doing some more. I'm going to take other devices and make them get on the internet. Um, actually, I'm going to, I wish I'd videoed this one at the time. I have an old uh, Macintosh SE30 that I actually really did put on the internet. Um, brought up Google and graphics, if you can imagine that. Black and white graphics on a, uh, a machine 25 years old. Um, well, close to it anyway, uh, using the internet. So, this is no serial console, faux internet stuff. This is the real deal. Um, I might have to kind of go back over that again just because it's pretty neat. Um, but that's it for this project and hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, look forward to seeing some more videos and um, look forward to getting some feedback from you guys on the uh, YouTube blog where I'll probably be posting this um, or if you see it elsewhere, I'm sure I'll have a place for feedback there. So uh, thanks for watching.